method was proposed in these two papers. And, uh, okay. So, uh, this uh, uh, protocol following that notation that I commented before, uh, these uh, circles represent rotations over one qubit, y and x rotation that we can produce uh, modulating heat frequency fields. And these are free evolution under uh, Ising type Hamiltonian. And here we have that quench. Uh, this could be a fast quench or are not too fast or, or a, a, a slow dynamics uh, doing this uh, open and compression of the energy gap. So doing this, so as, uh, using this kind of, of algorithm, we can measure the magnetization in the end of the day for a given um, time for this compression and expression. When we take the inverse Fourier transform of this data, we get the work probability distribution. So this is the probability to perform a given value of work divided by the Planck constant. So this is in frequency here, but in energy, it's about pico electron volts in that system. And uh, when we divide the probability distribution for the forward process, let us say the expansion, and by the, prob the probability distribution of the backward process, which is the compression process, uh, we can plug it in the Crookes relation. And uh, here are the experimental data with a very, very small uh, error bar. So we have to work a lot in order to get this very small error bar. So in this way, you could verify this uh, relation. We got exactly the prediction of this relation. We got a line in this uh, logarithmic plot. Here I have a work. Here I have the ratio between the two probability distribution in a logarithmic scale. And uh, in this case, this should be uh, a line. The slope of this line is related to the inverse temperature. So I can use the slope of this line, this out of equilibrium process, to measure the temperature of the system if we want. And we can also use the point where this line crosses this green line here to determine the variation of free energy. This is the only method that I know that allows us to measure free energy in an experiment. So uh, if we use this as a, as a thermometer, we could measure temperatures with precision of five nanokelvin in that system. The effective temperature of this spin system, my sample is at room temperature, 25, 26 Celsius degree, but we prepare a state which has an effective magnetic temperature for the spin system, which is about nanokelvin, the temperature of, of the nuclear spin state. So using that data, we can also verify the Jarzinski identity this was the first verification of, of Jarzinski identity and also the Crookes relation in a, in a quantum system. And uh, the knowledge about this work distribution will give us the possibility to test different aspects of a non-classical thermodynamics, uh, of a, a quantum thermodynamics in this uh, uh, small scenario. And after this experiment, it was reported in another experiment six months uh, later. Uh, using trapped ions to test Jarzinski inequality. Uh, the test of a Crookes relation uh, in a quantum setup, it, this is still the only test that we have of the Crookes relation in this quantum setup. So now I'm going to, to the other presentation of the third part. And uh, I will briefly acknowledge my collaborators in all these results. It's involved a lot of guys. Uh, in different projects, spreads around the world. And these are the agents that, that, that funding us, especially uh, we hope that the Brazilian agency is still alive <laughs> in the next couple of years. And uh, now let me talk about irreversibility in that system. So we usually associate uh, what you call the thermodynamic error of time to uh, what we consider that uh, uh, usually happen in nature. So when we have a process that increases entropy, that produces entropy, is a reversible process. Uh, sometimes we have uh, a, a, a reversible process, a process that, that does not produce entropy. And uh, we consider that it's impossible to have a process 
with decreased entropy. For example, uh, when we break in a glass, it's an irreversible process. When we look to the trajectory of a spaceship in orbit or a satellite in, or in the if orbit, uh, we will see a, a, a most reversible process. For example, if I challenge you to say to me if this move was record in, 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 a, in a forward or in a backward way, uh, or well, putting that other way, I mean playing this move in the forward or in the backward way. Just looking for the move, it's quite difficult to say if it is in the forward or in the backward way, because uh, the orbit of this object here is quite quasi reversible. But when I play a move like this one, you oh sorry, <laughs> without sound effects, <laughs> uh, you can guess easily that it was record in the backward or in the forward way. What, what do you think? I, I'm playing this move in the forward or in the backward way? In the backward, right? Because this is a breaking, a breaking glass in the backward way, and you will know that this process produces entropy, so uh, it's impossible to see something like this in the nature. And uh, we can test irreversibility in a quantum system uh, playing like this, doing a move of a dynamics of, of, of some quantum system. So let us suppose that we start again in an equilibrium state, then we change the Hamiltonian of the system, driving a parameter, and uh, this will drive the system to a uh, non-equilibrium state. If I do it very fast, I will end up in a state which is very far away from an equilibrium state. If I do it following an adiabatic protocol, a quantum, it, it's not the thermodynamic adiabatic protocol. It's, uh, I'm considering a quantum adiabatic evolution. So I'm considering that the evolution is, is low enough to satisfy the adiabatic theorem. So the probability to get a transition between the, against, the instantaneous eigenstates states of the system is, is small if you perform these dynamics in order to satisfy this kind of inequality. So if my final Hamiltonian is different from the initial Hamiltonian, we will end up in a non-equilibrium state again. And then when the system thermalizes with the reservoir, the system will dissipate an, an amount of energy which is proportional to the uh, entropy production, and we can write the entropy production that I showed to you before as a relative entropy, as a cube equilibrium divergence in, in, in the quantum scenario. So this is the equilibrium state, the, the, the equilibrium state at the final time, the equilibrium state for the final Hamiltonian, and this is the evolved state. So the divergence between these two states is related to the amount of energy that we will dissipate in the end of the day. So we call this amount of energy that we dissipate to go from the, uh, for the final state that we actually have to the adiabatic, is to the state that we obtain the adiabatic protocol, the quantum friction, and here is a kind of a residual lag. So when we perform a very fast process in a quantum system, we have this kind of, a, of quantum friction. And this will also limit some, uh, some, 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 some process in quantum information. So we can uh, test these ideas and, uh, and we can uh, verify uh, uh, irreversibility in that system, performing, for example, quantum state tomography in a stroboscopic way. So the, uh, the idea is to, to do, again, this gap compression and this gap uh, uh, expansion very fast. When do it use in 100 microseconds? The spin of the system, we follow the state of the spin of the system. This is the representation of the state of the spin uh, of the system in the block sphere. We follow it during the dynamics, and we see uh, we are moving the field here in the M sphere of the block sphere. And we, when do it very fast, the system will not follow the magnetic field. We have this nonlinear response. When we do it a little bit uh, uh, slower, uh, the spin uh, starts to try to, uh, 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 to follow the magnetic field. When we do it much slower, the spin starts to process around the magnetic field. So uh, the Kubak divergence uh, represents the distinguishability between these two paths, 
the path that we have in the Hilbert space for the forward evolution and the path that we have in the Hilbert space for the backward evolution. If the evolution is a unitary evolution, so at the end of the day, the system will dissipate energy to the reservoir. I'm not saying that we are producing entropy doing a unitary evolution. One part of the evolution is unitary, but in the end, we have an open system process, right? And uh, uh, when we have this, this, this unitary, the distance, the, the, sorry, the divergence between uh, this path in the forward dynamics and the backward dynamics is constant along the time. So uh, when we have a very reversible process, uh, these two paths are very distinguishable. When we have a, a, a process which is near to a quasi-static process, to a reversible one, the path of the forward and the backward dynamics is uh, almost indistinguishable. So the distinguishability between these two paths will measure the arrow of time in a quantum system. And um, we can perform this, uh, uh, we can characterize reversibility using this example. We can also uh, measure uh, the probability distribution of entropy production. As work is a stochastic variable, and uh, having the value of the free energy that we can measure using the technique that I, I, we developed it before, we can obtain this kind of distribution for entropy production. So the mean value of entropy is always positive, satisfying the clauses inequality, but we have some probability to get negative entropy production. So this explains why if you do post-selection, if, you, if you, we post-select some trajectories along this evolution, some transitions, along this evolution, we can apparently violate the second law. But we are not violating the second law because we are, we are looking for the mean value. But anyway, we can use this information about the entropy dis distribution to design a maxodaemon. If we design properly a feedback process in order to uh, uh, make the probability to have these guys uh, smaller than the probability to have these uh, events where we have negative entropy production, we will have a kind of entropy hertification. So, and these are the mean values of the entropy production depending on the, on the time of uh, the uh, evolution, on, on how fast, on how, how slow we do this compression and expansion. And this is uh, uh, the result that we get uh, from the quantum state tomography along this uh, uh, evolution. Right, uh, another interesting thing is uh, this uh, kind of result could not be uh, described by the linear response theory because we are far away from uh, an equilibrium dynamics. Now, I will connect uh, a little bit more uh, uh, information and thermodynamics. There is this very nice paper, review paper, published in Nature Physics in 2015 about this connection between information in thermodynamics, and uh, interesting enough, uh, Maxwell was also the first guy to write a paper about cybernetics, about this science of control and feedback. Uh, Maxwell explained in this paper published in the Proceeding of Royal Society of London uh, how the Watts governor, how this centrifugal governor uh, works. This was introduced by James Watts in a phenomenological way in order to maintain the rotation of Einstein and Gini constant. So when, when we have this kind of scenario, uh, we can describe how a Maxwell daemon works. So just remember uh, uh, what is a Maxwell daemon. So Maxwell in uh, 1867 uh, introduced this uh, idea, this uh, uh, total experiment where they, he consider this uh, intelligent beam, microscopic beam, that has access to the macroscopic state of particles of a gas. Let us suppose that I have here an ideal gas uh, at equilibrium with in, in some temperature, and here we have this uh, 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 gate, and the daemon can decide which particle can go to one, one side to another. The daemon could consider uh, some uh, velocity, and uh, above this velocity, uh, the daemon lets the particle go from the uh, right side to the, left, to, to the left side, and the daemon can do the opposite. 
let the slower particles on the left side go to the right side. If the demon uh, do this kind of thing, it, the demon will reduce the entropy of the system without expand any work. So the idea is the demon can open and close this gate without uh, uh, expand any work. And we can also use that uh, uh, temperature gradient to extract work in a, in, a, in a engine, if you want. There are another example of a Maxwell demon which is more concrete, which is the Zeller engine. Let us suppose that uh, we have a chamber with just one particle. So this is an ideal gas of one particle. This is very, very idealized. And then I can put an ambulus here, a movable ambulus, and uh, the demon uh, uh, should access the information about which side the particle is. If the particle is in this side, the demon can attach a mass from the right side. If the particle is on, on the other side, the demon could attach this mass on the left side, for example. Letting this system expand uh, freely, there is a, a reservoir here at temperature T, and uh, uh, this free expansion of this I, I, one particle ideal gas could perform KBT ln of two of work in this mass. So the mass will, will up a little bit here due to this expansion. We're using just one reservoir. So we're using information, the demon can extract work from this uh, idealized situation. But if you, it, it seems that we are violating the second law because we are starting work from just one reservoir. But we are not violating the second law because if you want to perform this in a cyclic way, we also have to go back to the initial situation and uh, also the demon could be described in the apparatus, and we also to uh, erase the demon's memory. So this is the exorcism of the Maxwell demon that was performed by Charles Bennett using the ideas of the Landauer principle. To erase the demon memory, we will expand at least KBT ln of two. So the work that, that we can perform here will be wasted here to erase the demo memory. So this kind of engine will not give you any net work. The net work will be equal to zero because the work that we can gain, you have to expand here to uh, erase the memory. But we still uh, have an engine that we, uh, uh, that we can use information to run uh, for example, if we have another reservoir for the memory of the demon, if, if, this temper if the temperature of this reservoir is, is smaller than the temperature of the reservoir which is connected to the chamber, we can instruct to work from that system using information, using information about the microscopic system. So from a modern point of view, how we can describe this situation? Uh, we can describe this, again, using a fluctuation relation. When we consider a fluctuation relation for a feedback process, so what demon is performing in the system is a kind of feedback process, but the demon is also part of the system. The demon is also a microscopic uh, system. And uh, we can suppose that we have this situation here. We have an equilibrium state, then we drive the state out of equilibrium, then the demon can perform a measurement on the, on the state using the result of this measurement, the demon can choose uh, dynamics for the state in the next path. And these dynamics could be uh, what we call a unital dynamics, that, uh, uh, that there, there is no cost to, uh, a unital dynamics is a map that preserves, so I'm, I'm calling this F as a map, and this map preserves identity. For example, the phasing is a unital dynamics. So the dynamic could be more general than a unitary, and there is no energy cost if we perform the phasing in the energy basis of the system uh, from this thermodynamic point of view. So this uh, Sagawa and Ueda from Japan 
uh, obtained this kind of a fluctuation relation for a system under a feedback like this. So here we have the exponential of minus beta, the inverse temperature work, the variation of free energy. Now as this protocol, this uh, process depends on the result of the measurement, and then we could have different final Hamiltonians. Uh, the variation of free energy also depends on the K, on, on, on the protocol applied here in the feedback control. And this I here is the uh, mutual information density between the measurements and the applied protocol by the demo. We could have also some noise and, it, and the feedback process could, could not be perfect as well. And this mutual information measure how it is correlated, right? So these are the quantities. The variation of free energy can be written in terms of uh, the partition functions, the initial and the final partition functions. And uh, using, again, uh, the same procedure that we did to obtain the second law from the Jarzinski relation, we can obtain a generalized second law in the presence of a microscopic feedback. So we have information about the microscopic state. We are doing a measurement here. And here we are doing an intervention. In this case, uh, the bound for the entropy production is negative. And this explains why the Maxwell diamond can reduce the entropy of the system. So in the presence of a feedback, we have a new form of, of the second law that takes into account the Maxwell diamond. So it's not necessary to uh, uh, exercise the Maxwell diamond, because now we can generalize the thermodynamics in, in, this, in a situation where we have things that works like a Maxwell diamond. And uh, the bound for, 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 this, for the entropy production is the negative value of the mutual information. This mean value here is the mutual information of the measurement and the feedback process which is applied here. And along, along some time, people try to see if um, this bound was or not achievable. And they can uh, say to you that this bound is not achievable with projective measurements and the unitary feedback, actually unital feedback. And uh, also, so we have uh, uh, this, this nice generalization of the second law, but if you look for the expression of this brutal information, uh, we only have information about the correlation between the measurement and, and the process which it was, is implemented. We don't have any information about which kind of process we have to implement in order to, uh, to have a Maxwell demon, in order to have entropy hitification, in order to have uh, a decreasing in the entropy of the system, negative values of entropy production. So uh, these are the first experiments uh, working on these uh, uh, dam quantum Maxwell demons, the, the quantum uh, implementation of a Maxwell demon. And uh, uh, in this scenario, we can also write a uh, equality, which is also valid for a far from an equilibrium system, uh, where we have the presence of a Maxwell diamond. So, uh, combining information theory, quantum information theory with thermodynamics, we can write the entropy production as this expression here. So, uh, I have here uh, the process, and then I have this. Maxwell diamond measuring the system and controlling some operation here. And uh, I'm not entering the details how we do this calculation, but if you look at the paper, you will see in details it. So uh, we have the entropy production, which is equal to minus uh, the information gain, so the amount of information that the Maxwell diamond will gain performing the measurement, plus the variation of the Kubak divergence between the equilibrium state of the final Hamiltonian and, uh, and the state that, that we achieve performing uh, uh, the, the feedback process, and the variation of the von Neumann entropy. So uh, look, the entropy production involves a series of quantities uh, uh, which, associated, which are associated to uh, quantum information. And it, it's, it is also important, important to say that the von Neumann entropy of a system is not the thermodynamic entropy of the system. It is, it is the thermodynamic entropy of the system only for a system which is in an equilibrium state. Out of equilibrium, what we have is an entropy production that could depend on, on several 
uh, information quantity. So one, one, in one side of this equality, we have information, and the other side, we have thermodynamics. So uh, we see that a necessary condition to implement a maxwell diamond is to have the information gain bigger than that quantities. When we have a unitary feedback, uh, we can produce a unitary feedback in order to have the variation of phenomenon entropy equal to zero, but we will get uh, this variation, this mean value of the variation of the, uh, of the relative entropy uh, not equal to zero. For a non-unitary feedback, this kind of a unital feedback that I, I, I commented before, uh, we can have the situation where we can make this term equal to zero, but we cannot make this term equal to zero. So uh, this bound, this mutual information bound, uh, which is bigger than the information gain bound, is not achievable. So uh, the fluctuation theorem gives us a very nice bound uh, for the generalized second law, but this bound is not achievable. And uh, let us now consider an implementation of a Maxwell diamond. So the idea is to perform a quench, a very fast quench. I will change the, the system Hamiltonian, for example, from sigma x to sigma y, and I will also increase the size of the gap in a very, very fast way. So there, there are no time for the system uh, change its state after this uh, change of Hamiltonian. And uh, the Maxwell diamond uh, will be implemented following, so the idea is to use, again, our PET molecule, the chloroform, uh, as our, our system to, 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 to do a proof of principle of this. And uh, we will consider the carbon our working substance, and uh, the hydrogen will play the role of the diamond. So the hydrogen will get information about the carbon performing, uh, we will emulate a projective non-selective measurement. So we will correlate the memory of the diamond with the system, and after we will implement a feedback protocol that will depend on the memory of the diamond. So uh, we can emulate a measurement process using a C-dot gate plus a controller defacing. So after uh, this part of the circuit, we will end up in a state which is the, the, the state that we would have in the von Neumann description of a measurement. So uh, the hydrogen state plays the role of a pointer, and these are the state of the carbon after this measurement. Choosing properly the protocol, uh, this is how we implement the measurements, and this also explains uh, what is the effect of this field gradient. So here I have all the speeds of the sample processing with the same uh, 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 phase. When we introduce this gradient field, we have uh, different molecules localized in different places of the sample along the z-direction, <laughs> processing with different phases. When we take the average over all the phases, we get an effective dephasing. We can also protect the system from this dephasing, performing a pi and a minus pi rotation, and then we can get the system coherent again. So we can control the phasing just one of the qubits if, if you, we want. So this is how we emulate projective measurements in that system. And uh, how this measurement is uh, 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 a, proje a, projective, a, 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 a projective, a bona fide projective measurement. Uh, we can compare, we can again perform a quantum, quantum process tomography. We can compare the map that we obtain from this quantum state tomography of the experimental implementation of this projective measurement with an ideal measurement. And again, we have a small deviation from a projective measurement. Uh, we can also introduce in a controlled way a basis mismatch for the measurement. So I can introduce a noise in the, in the, in the daemon uh, uh, in order to test how the daemon is, is resilient to noise. Again, I use the trace distance to uh, make a comparison between uh, the ideal and the experimental uh, data. Another, another figure of merit that we use a lot in quantum information is the fidelity. Uh, we can also, uh, we can define uh, fidelity uh, between two states in this way. Let us suppose that this is the ideal state. This is what, what we have in our experiment. 
and this is again the ideal one. So uh, if you get one for this quantity, it's, it means that you have 100% of fidelity. If you get 0.9, it means that we have 90% of fidelity in the experiment. Uh, the trace distance is nice because we have this operational uh, uh, meaning which is associated to the, the distinguishability between the two process, the ideal one and the process that we can uh, uh, implement in the lab. So doing that protocol that, that, that I showed to you, we can measure the entropy production using the technique that we, we, pre, we introduced in the previous paper. Uh, where we, we will, was studying uh, uh, reversibility in the system, and then we can see negative values for the entropy production. So we can, we, we can uh, do, uh, with the system, entropy rectification. And this is the noise uh, due to the control basis mismatch. So when we have a, proto uh, a feedback which is, which is close to, a, to, a, to a, a perfect feedback, we have these values for, for the entropy production, the, the negative value for the entropy production in nets. I'm using the natural units of information in this, this work. And here are the temperature of the initial system. Here I'm, I'm, I'm putting the temperature in terms of KBT, it is pico electron volts. It's about 10 uh, tenths of the nano Kelvin, uh, the effective temperature of the spin system. So at some point when we add noise, the Maxodemo is top to work, and uh, we can also characterize all the information quantities that we have in these fluctuation theorems in the presence of feedback, and also uh, in our in our equality. So this is the entropy, the negative values of the entropy production that we can reach. This is uh, the information gain uh, as function of the temperature, and this is the mutual information. So uh, the mutual information in our feedback process. Uh, is the maximum value that we can reach for, for the mutual information in that kind of protocol, which is ln of two. So our protocol is, 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 is really good uh, when, when we don't, don't have uh, uh, control basis mismatch. When we add control basis mismatch, uh, the mutual information will decrease, but the, 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 the information gain does not depend on this quantum basis mismatch. Only the feedback process depends on this. So, and this is how we measure all the quantities, and this is all the quantities that we have in the inequality. In the equality. So, uh, uh, in, in this experiment, we could see that, uh, at least for this configuration of projective measurements and uh, unit of feedback, uh, the bound uh, of, of the fluctuation theorems were not reachable, so this is the bound, right? We could not we could not achieve that bound, but we can produce a maxodemon uh, that, for the system, is the best possible daemon, and we can reach this kind of uh, uh, reduction of entropy. So we are challenged the second law of thermodynamics, but again. Uh, we are not. We are reducing the entropy of the system using the knowledge of the microscopic state of the system, but we are we are not uh, violate the second law because if you want to do it in a cyclic way, we have to erase the demon's memory and we have to expend some energy to erase the demon's memory. But now we we, we do not need to take care about the erasing of the demon's memory because we have this kind of uh, of generalized the second law. So it's not a problem to have negative entropy production, right, in the presence of, of a system that can play with the macroscopic state of the system. So now we can think about thermodynamic protocols when we have this kind of thing. So I will now introduce this kind of thing with, with, with I think, one, one of the fun things that we can do with this kind of of, uh, of, uh, of configuration. So the idea here is reversing the arrow of time in a way that we, we, we do not need a Maxwell daemon. So uh, we would like to answer the question if it is possible to challenge the second law 
without using a feedback protocol? And the answer is yes, we can use non-classical correlations to uh, let heat flow spontaneously, spontaneously. We don't have to put any energy on the system, like a fridge. It's not necessary to introduce any energy in the system. And we can see the heating flow from a cold system to a hot system during some time interval due to initial quantum correlations. Again, we are challenged the second law, but we are not violating the second law because we are considering an initial situation where we have two systems which are correlated. And in the usual thermodynamic description, we consider that the initial, uh, the, 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 the heat exchange between two systems happens in a situation where the two systems are uncorrelated. And when we put this paper on archive, uh, just a few days after, appeared this comment in the Times uh, of London uh, saying that uh, uh, we, <laughs> we could see that uh, the time flow backwards. We will not do this kind of thing, right? We will do actually a kind of a reversion of a process in time, not the time itself. So uh, this idea of error of time was introduced, thermodynamic error of time, was introduced by uh, Arthur Eddington in the beginning of the last century. And uh, 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 it's associated to the increase of entropy. So uh, our perception of time, for example, I can say to you, uh, if I put here a, a, a cup of coffee over this table, I can uh, try to, I, I can say that uh, I, will, uh, I will measure the time looking to the temperature of the coffee, because I know that the coffee will uh, uh, become uh, less hot and colder and colder at, uh, uh, at finally uh, get uh, thermalized with this uh, room temperature. So uh, looking to the heat uh, going from the hot to the cold system uh, could be a kind of measurement of time. So uh, if we see something which is unusual, heat going from the cold to the hot uh, system, we know it, it seems to be a kind of impossible process because uh, we have to reduce entropy production in this kind of thing, like, like the moves that I, I showed to you before. And uh, let us consider the following situation. Uh, we have a smallest possible version of heat transfer problem I have just one qubit here prepared in a hot state and a cold qubit here prepared in a cold state, in Gibbs states. And then we let the two qubits interact via thermal interaction, thermal contact. And uh, here I have exactly the map of thermal thermalization. And uh, after some time, we get the two spins in a warm state. If I start with the two locally thermal states, so when we take the reduced density operator of these two spins, I get a Gibbs state, the same Gibbs state that I get here for the cold state, for, for, for the cold system, and for the hot system. But the systems are correlated. Locally, I cannot say if the system is correlated or not. Uh, we, we only have access to the information about the correlation only if I perform a full quantum state tomography. Using that, uh, uh, due to this correlation during the dynamics, the heat could flow from cold to the hot, and at the end of the day, we could have the hot system even hotter and the cold system colder. Uh, this was theoretically predicted in a couple of papers. The first of them was a paper by Z. Lloyd in the 18th. Yeah. How would uh, the, the the flow in the in the in the wrong way in the not in the wrong way but in the reverse way? I will show it in the next couple of slides. <laughs> Actually, uh, we will consume correlations. Uh, we have again a process which is similar what the demo, the Maxwell diamond do. We are transforming uh, information in this case. This is, is the information encoded in the correlation of the two systems in, in, in some kind of energy. In this case, heat transport. So 
we will see it in the next couple of slides. So we are considering now that we have these two systems, and the two systems are isolated from the whole universe. I, I don't have any energy entering the system. And uh, uh, we have one system in, in, a, in a cold state, the other system in a hot state. These two systems are in a Gibbs state, so there is no problem to define temperature for the local systems, right? And then if the two systems are uncorrelated at the beginning, uh, we can show that the sum of the heat that is entered in the two systems uh, is uh, bigger than the variation of the mutual information of the two systems. If I start with zero correlation between the two systems, uh, we can show that during a, a, a thermalization process, uh, the heat will flow from the hot to the cold. If I start with the two systems correlated in some way, the motor information is, is different from zero. It's not always, it depends on the kind of correlation that we have. It depends on the kind of interaction that we have between the two systems. The, 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 the heat could go from the hot to the cold system, decreasing the correlation. Again, we obtained it, we introduced an expression uh, combining information quantities uh, with thermodynamic quantities. So on the left side, we have the heat which is entering the system B, the variation of the temperature of the system, the inverse temperature of system A and system B. Here we have the variation of mutual information and the relative entropy of the two systems. So th these are the entropy production. So if you have correlations that compensate the variation of the entropy production, we can have this kind of behavior. So this is a kind of a compensation of entropies. So on one side, we have information. The other side, we have thermodynamics again. And uh, in this paper here, we explore what are the necessary and sufficient conditions to have this kind of unconventional flux of heat. But we only have a proof for qubits. For systems which are bigger than, 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 than the qubits, we don't have a necessary and sufficient condition. We only have a sufficient, con uh, we only have a necessary condition. So the correlation of the two systems uh, will be chosen in this way. Uh, we start, uh, this, this is uh, the joint density operator for the hot and the cold system, and this is the correlated part. This part has no partial trace. So from the local point of view, I have a Gibbs state. So I will consider this kind of correlations. The interaction between the two qubits will be this uh, jayosinski moraya interaction. This kind of interaction will produce a map which is equal to the amplitude damping generalized locally. So this is uh, uh, exactly uh, when, when we let the system evolve for a, a, a given uh, uh, time window under this, this unitary interaction, this will produce uh, heat exchange in the usual way. So when we look for one of these spins, we get uh, the thermalization map, the usual thermalization map. And this is the heat distribution that we get during the dynamics of the two spin system. And this is how we produce this jayosinski moraya interaction in our system. So we use these uh, local rotations plus free evolution in order to produce effectively this kind of Hamiltonian. The natural Hamiltonian that I have in my system is a sigma z, sigma z Hamiltonian. So this is a kind of a quantum simulation of a thermalization process. And there is no energy cost to perform unitary rotations. We showed it in the, in the, in the, from, from this quantum thermodynamics point of view, we showed it in the supplementary material of the paper. So here we have uh, uh, the, the, the temperature, the, the thermal energy, KBT, of the uh, hot spin, and here of the initially cold spin. When we have initially uncorrelated system, we see the two spins going to uh, 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 a thermalized state. When we have an initially correlated state, so this, uh, 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 these orange uh, symbols represent the experimental data for an initially correlated, st correlated state. We can see a boost in this, the increasing of the temperature of the hot spin 
and also we decrease the temperature of the cold spin. So it's a like it's a kind of a quantum refrigerator. Actually, it, it's a like it, it's a kind of a refrigerator and um, moved by correlations. We are not performing any 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 uh, work on the system in order to get this. And after and this is the mutual information, and this is the geometric quantum discord of the initial state, uh, of the state. It's how, how, how it evolves in time. When we consume all the non-classical part of the correlation, the effect of the reversing, the heat uh, flow uh, stops, and then the flow uh, of heat uh, uh, starts to go in the usual direction, and in the end of the day, we have the two systems thermalized. But in this uh, time window, we have this reversion of the thermodynamic error of time. And here, we also have the characterization of all of these uh, uh, information quantities. And uh, in here, we have the, the, the uh, when we have initially correlated state, uh, we have this kind of behavior in the right side of this equation. And we have an uncorrelated state, we have this kind of thing. So we can think that the the, the, the Hamiltonian of the system will convert that initial correlation in a kind of uh, work in this uh, 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 heat transport uh, uh, phenomena. So the idea is to, uh, we could think about a, a use of this kind of effect in the future to perform a fridge operation in a part of a quantum processor. So if you want to move heat from one part to another part of a processor, I can use the initially correlated state as my resource to perform uh, cooling. This destroyed the correlation, the initial correlation of the system. Uh, uh, the initial correlation of the system decreases. When we consume all the correlation, the effect stops. So the resource to perform this cooling are these non-classical correlation, actually. Uh, we can also prove for two qubits, if you have a classically correlated state, a state with uh, zero quantum discord, we don't have this kind of effect. So we need to have a quantum correlated state in order to get this kind of behavior for two qubits. For bigger systems, we, we don't have a necessary insufficient condition, unfortunately. So we can say that for qubits, this is uh, 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 a non-classical effect. Okay, now. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it's not uh, our my yeah my 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 free time my my uh, my natural interaction between the two spins are, 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 are something like a, a eyes interaction sigma z sigma z interaction. This is what represents this kind of a yellow thing here. This is evolution over this time. J is a frequency is is, is the natural frequency of the interaction. So uh, in the end of the day, this is a time. This is an interaction time. And uh, uh, we perform some rotations here in order to produce effectively this Hamiltonian. And uh, these rotations are uh, hard, hard pulses, are pulses like that, are square pulses. And then it, 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 it's, just, it's just a basis rotation. And uh, we can prove that there is no work cost to perform this kind of rotation. So we are, we are uh, uh, doing a simulation of this interaction because this interaction will reproduce the thermalization map that we want, but there is no cost to produce this simulation. Also, to prepare an initial correlated state has also no cost because we can prepare it using unitary operations. And uh, uh, we can now, because we, you can say that's okay, we are, you, you are reversing the, the, the direction of the heat flow, but there is a cost for that. Okay, the resources that we are using are correlations. And what are the costs of creating correlation is not clear yet in this quantum thermodynamics setup. 
If you consider the normal definition of work, et cetera, there are no costs to create correlations. Of course, a, a, quantum, a quantum experiment has a lot of thermodynamic costs because we have this control system in the electronic system, et cetera. When, also, when we run our car engine, we have a lot of costs because uh, we don't have a hot environment for free. We have to blow fuel. And this fuel was produced in a, from petrol, if you consider all the energy that we expend to produce the fuel that we are blowing in the inside of the car engine, uh, probably the car engine will not be an un, efficient thing, right? Probably we will waste much more energy than the mechanical energy that we have, that, that we can extract from, from, from the car. But in thermodynamics, we consider that the hot reservoir is a resource. So we, we don't put it in, 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 the, in the account of the energies. And uh, in the, maybe in the quantum thermodynamics, we also should consider correlations as a resource. And then we can discuss, uh, for example, in the case, in the case of a, fuel, a car fuel, we, and here in Brazil, we have gas and we also have ethanol. And we can discuss what costs less or, 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 or costs more. But if one kind, if with one kind of fuel we can do something better than the other, than with the other kind of fuel, uh, we can use this if you have uh, uh, money enough to pay for this kind of resource. So this is the same idea. If you have, if you have a situation where you need to decrease the temperature of a small, small PC of quantum uh, technology you can use the correlations to do it. Controlling, uh, so if you have a, a source of a correlated state, we can use it to perform a cooling, for example. Any, any question? Other question about this? Yeah. So I imagine that all of this, uh, you did it in experiments of yeah. hydrogen. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was just a test of principle. So we, we did it inside of a molecule, inside of this, Um, we, we preparing the initial state. In the in the initial state preparation, uh, in, in my last slide, I showed to you that I can prepare uh, states like a, a bell uh, diagonal state, like a, oh this one. So here is a is, is a is a sequence of pulses to prepare initially correlated state, for example. This, this one is, is the Werner state. But I can prepare this, another kind of correlated state with another kind of, uh, of initialization. So uh, this, uh, uh, in, at this point, we have the state zero, zero. And here, we prepare the correlation. So to prepare a correlated state, we only need unitary operations. And uh, if you compute the work that we employ to prepare a correlated state, we get a zero value considering that definition of work because we, we use a, a time constant. Actually, our Hamiltonian is not, it's, it's like a sum of two uh, step functions, half side step functions. Then we can show that the work in this kind of a manipulation of the Hamiltonian is zero cons considering that definition of work that we use in quantum thermodynamics. So there are no costs in this part. Here we have a cost because here we have this dephasing, and this dephasing is not in the in the in the in the Hamiltonian uh, uh, eigenstate basis, and and here we are cooling the system. So uh, when we start that, that that experiment, we start in the zero temperature state, and uh, and then uh, we prepare a thermal state. So this is not the protocol for the preparation of the state of, of, of that, that experiment, but it will be similar to this one. And after the correlation, you let it evolve? Yes, exactly. Freely? Uh, not freely, because we want that this evolve under this kind of Hamiltonian. So our evolution is a combination of free evolution plus some rotations. But this rotation takes something about uh, seven or eight uh, microseconds, and the free evolution takes hundreds of uh, microseconds. 
So the free evolution is the, is, is the major part of the dynamics, but we also have these rotations here. And these microseconds are the most important because of the memory of the algorithm, which is even longer. Yeah, yeah, it, the, the coherence time, yeah, the decoherence time of that system is about seconds. And I can also perform a quantum, because uh, in, in the theoretical description of, of that system, we consider that the system A and B are isolated from, 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 from the whole world. And then in order to have the same uh, thing in the lab, we always have the environment in the lab, but if my dynamics is, uh, uh, is short enough, I can see an evolution which is quite close to a unitary evolution. Then we can perform a quantum, state tomo a quantum process tomography to prove that in this time window, the evolution is, 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 is almost a unitary evolution. And we performed this before in the previous experiment. So we know that the effects of the coherence during, during this time window is, 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 is really small. So here, uh, the, the line are the theoretical predictions, are, are, are the theoretical simulation of the experiment, which is easy because it's a small system. And uh, the uh, uh, dots and the, the, the cycle and the square here are the experimental data. So we have a very good agreement. And the error bar is, is smaller than the symbol. That's why you cannot see here. So in the NMR system, we have a very, very precise control and a very precise uh, way to measure. We can measure uh, 0.7 hertz in 500 megahertz. So we have a very good signal to noise ratio. The scale, you mean, ah, for, 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 for the heating, and uh, because uh, the energy gap of the two systems are different. We have one system with an, uh, a, big a big energy gap and the other system with a smaller energy gap. So this also takes place in this heat transport. But what is interesting here is uh, the increasing of temperature that we have here and the decreasing of the temperature that we have here is even bigger than the variation that we have in the normal thermalization. So uh, we can also use correlation to boost energy transport in the, in, in, in the usual way also. So uh, we can use it to revert the heat flux, but we can also use this to increase the heat flux. So one idea is to combine this uh, in, in, a, in, 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 a, in a engine or in a conventional fridge. So any, uh, we hope to find some, uh, some uh, useful, uh, 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 useful task to, to, to use this in, in a quantum device in the near future. Oh, please. Please, please, please feel free. Yeah. Yes. As, yeah. As, as, as we have the, that, that situation where the two systems are isolated, uh, if you let the system continuing evolving, uh, you will see some uh, oscillations of this behavior here, but uh, the decoherency starts to take place in, 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 a, in, a, in a time much longer than this, and then we, we don't have a perfect revival. And uh, also, as we are simulating thermalization, our thermalization protocol work in this time interval. After this time interval, it's not a thermalization protocol anymore. But we will create again correlation, and we will have again uh, this repeated uh, behavior. So this is this is really just a proof of principle of this kind of thing, because we are simulating uh, the thermalization. We don't have a natural thermalization here. But the major part of these quantum thermodynamic experiments, we have a simulation of the thermalization, because we want to have a, a fast thermalization. And uh, any 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 other question about this? So I still have a, a time. Then I will talk about this another very nice thing in this in this context. So uh, this is uh, uh, also a, 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 a text from 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 this uh, science news uh, website, 
and uh, we can use uh, we can evade friction using what we call a uh, shortcut from adiabaticity. So the idea is to use now the same kind of process, compression and expansion of a gap in order to perform an engine. Let us suppose that I, I uh, uh, let us consider the auto cycle. In the auto cycle, we start with the system in the code uh, uh, in, in the code state, and then we expand the gap. Then we thermalize the system with a hot state. Then we compress the gap. Then we thermalize it again with a cold system, and then we perform the cycle. When we perform one cycle in our sample, we have 10 to 17 molecules. So just one realization of our experiment is 10 to 17 repetitions of the cycle. And uh, we prepare an initial state using this heat frequency field. So the heat frequency field will place the role of the reservoir. The hot reservoir is the radio frequency field uh, in, in uh, resonant with the hydrogen. And the cold reservoir is the radio frequency field resonant with the carbon. Then uh, we start to do this gap compression. Then we perform this kind of evolution here. Here, it, it is a complete thermalization. Instead of a partial thermalization, like in the previous experiment, we are performing a complete thermalization. And, uh, and uh, we can perform this thermalization very fast. And uh, so the idea is to use the hydrogen as a bus for the heat, and then we can deliver the heat in the proper time. So we, we, our, our reservoirs are the heat frequency fields. We are just using the hydrogen to perform a kind of algorithm thermalization in order to do it in the proper time. In, in the major part of these uh, quantum thermodynamic experiments, the thermalization is performed in, in, a, in, a, in a simulated way. So doing this, we can analyze, uh, we can write uh, 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 an expression for the efficiency that could be written in terms of the Carnot eff efficiency or the auto efficiency. I have the auto cycle, right? But I can write the efficiency in terms of Carnot minus a lag. This lag is associated to entropy production. And uh, here, the minimum value for this lag is exactly the difference between Carnot and the auto. When we perform the, the, the cycle in the adiabatic limit, in the quantum adiabatic limit, we will get uh, the, the, the auto efficiency. We can now, again, write the, the, the work distribution for this engine in terms of the uh, characteristic function, and we can divide the characteristic, as we have full thermalization, we can show that the, the characteristic function for the work in the whole engine is composed by a product of two characteristic functions, and then we can characterize all the energy fluctuation of the engine. So these are the work distribution for, the, for, for this engine, considering this compression and expansion time as 100 microseconds, and here considering 500 microseconds. So here we can say that we have the mean value of work is positive, of extracted work is positive. Here the mean value of the extracted work is negative. It means that the engine does not work as an engine. This is just, this is just producing entropy. If you, we operate the engine very fast, we will produce a lot of entropy. These are all the energy configurations that we have. It's about how often uh, uh, the work in that kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, path uh, for the configuration of the, uh, of, this, of the spin state is about uh, peak electron volts. And its peak of this distribution corresponds to one of these uh, paths of the configuration. These are the, the free energy in each part of the cycle. And this is the, the mean extracted work per cycle. This depends on, 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 the t on the operation time of the engine. When we operate the engine in a, in a longer time, we will get something which become closer to the, to the, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, adiabatic regime. And uh, when we operate the engine very fast, uh, the work, we cannot extract the work. And these are the, the temperatures for the uh, hot and the cold medium that we choose to test the engine. And here we have the power that we can extract. And uh, here we have the power. So at some, at some point, we cannot extract power. This is the maximum power operation of the engine. We would like to operate this engine in a finite time because we want to operate in the maximum power regime. 
and maybe it's not uh, the, the point where the efficiency is maximum, but here uh, we got uh, a very good efficiency. So our efficiency uh, uh, at maximum power is very close to the auto efficiency, uh, 44%. So uh, uh, it's, not, it's not correct. It's not 0.44%. It's 44%, right? We have to erase the percent symbol here. Sorry, <laughs> this has me in the in the paper. It is correct, and uh, um, right. And this is the first uh, uh, realization of a, a quantum engine. And uh, uh, to give you one idea, the best commercial uh, car uh, uh, engines operates at 27 percent of uh, efficiency. But it seems that. Uh, this quantum engine is bounded by the same amount, uh, uh, the efficiency and the power uh, is the same amount of, 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 of things that we have in the classical uh, uh, scenario. So when we perform an, uh, an auto cycle in a quantum system, we have an extra source of entropy which is related to the coherence of the system. So this is the lag. When we, we perform a very fast cycle, we produce a lot of coherence because we have uh, this transition between the, egg, the instantaneous eigen states of the system and the lag uh, become very high and, 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 and the engine is stopped to work as an engine. So if you, we want to control the entropy production uh, in the system, uh, we can also perform this, this cycle in a slow way in order to get uh, an adiabatic protocol. But the power in the adiabatic protocol goes down to a to very small values. So this is this is the power for a long time operation. The power uh, will become smaller and smaller. Uh, so we can operate this engine in a fast way, producing less entropy using this idea put forward by Michael Berry. Uh, of this shortcut to adiabaticity. So the idea is to add in the Hamiltonian a term, what they, he call as a super adiabatic term, that will uh, reduce the transition between the eigenstates of the system uh, by an interferometric process. So this is how to compute the term. In our case, it is quite simple. It's just a sigma z here. And uh, in, in our setup, add a sigma z term in the Hamiltonian means that just uh, 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 perform the pulse out of resonance. I just need to add uh, adding an off of resonance term in order to add this kind of thing. So this is the uh, work distribution. Uh, for different times for operation of the engine. This is a, a very fast operation time. This is a slow operation time, right? And this is the probability distribution. So when we operate it very fast, we have zero peaks here. When we operate it slow, we have just few peaks here in the work distribution. When we add the super adiabatic term, uh, we have almost the same work distribution. Uh, this does not depend on how fast or how slow we operate the engine. So we are controlling here the entropy production of the engine. And then when we look to the efficiency, so the red uh, uh, symbols here uh, are this super adiabatic realization of this engine. So we can perform uh, 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 the, the cycle very fast, and we can have a positive efficiency quite close to the auto efficiency. On the other hand, in the conventional engine, in this uh, time window, this does not work. So we also have this uh, increasing in the power. So we can extract work in a time that was impossible uh, in, in the conventional way, adding this extra term in the Hamiltonian. And then this is the lag. When, when we, this is the quantum friction for the conventional engine. And uh, when we have the super adiabatic engine, we only have this uh, minimum lag, which is the residual lag, which is the fact that when we write the, uh, the efficiency in terms of the auto efficiency minus this uh, divergence, this is the Kubak divergence, but this is not the entropy production, this is not the, the, the reference state, it's not the equilibrium state anymore, this is the adiabatic state. 
uh, this is what appeared when we write this expression, again, using information, quantum information quantities to write the, 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 the efficiency of a process. And uh, here we see uh, you know, how, uh, when we are close to the adiabatic state, we will also be close to the auto limit. So this is a way to perform a very fast uh, uh, protocol without producing entropy, without producing quantum friction. We can evade quantum friction in these in this quantum engines. And uh, you can ask me, uh, what is the limitation of this kind of thing? Probably the limitation is the quantum speed limit, but we are, we are far from the quantum speed limit. But uh, in our experimental setup, the limitation is, is the power that we can uh, 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 put in our probe, in, our, in, in, the, in the antennas that produce uh, the heat frequency field. As we are just uh, put the, the, the Hamiltonian off of the resonance, there is no cost to add this extra term in the Hamiltonian because we are not adding another field. We are just pumping the system out of the resonance. But if, if we are, if you put it much far from the resonance, the system will not uh, react uh, uh, from, uh, uh, to the heat frequency field, and then we will not have an, an engineering. So probably, uh, we will have some limit to that GAN that we can have here. And uh, finally, so uh, in this quantum thermodynamics in general, uh, coherency is considered an extra source of, uh, of, of entropy production. And then uh, uh, we can get something which is above from the usual thermodynamics using quantum correlations or, or, or feedback process like in the maxon Demon case, but uh, it's not clear uh, which kind of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of, of enrichment we could have using coherence. So again, we can write uh, the efficiency of an engine with partial thermalization. Instead of consider a full thermalization, you can consider partial thermalization, then we will have a lot of interference along the process. And uh, in this case, the lag from the Carnot efficiency could be written in terms of these quantities here, and also what we call the relative entropy of coherence. So this is a way to measure coherence. Here we have a, 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 a completely the phasing map uh, in a given basis. In our case, the basis is the energy basis in different points of the protocol, and this is the entropy of the system. So this is a measurement of coherence. And in our uh, uh, in our in our uh, our lag that prevents us to 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 reach Carnot at finite time is composed of one part which is associated to the population, just the diagonal part of of of, of the density operator in the different uh, uh, bases, plus uh, a coherent part. Manipulating correctly, uh, choosing correctly, adjusting correctly. Uh, the parameters of the cycle, uh, we can get uh, 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 an arrangement using uh, uh, setting uh, accordingly the parameters and using the interference process in, in, in our favor. This is what happens in an engine where I perform the phasing. So I'd like to isolate what is the effect of coherence in my uh, thermodynamic protocol. It could be a fridge or an engine. In this case here, I put the coefficients of, of performance. So this is a fridge actually, but this calculation is, is for an engine. Sorry, uh, this is not published yet. And uh, here uh, I have a phased version of that fridge, and here I have that fridge with coherence. So we can have an enrichment in the coefficient of performance uh, uh, using this interference process. If it, we adjust the parameters in the wrong way, we could have a smaller coefficient of performance uh, than what we have without coherence. So uh, uh, we, when, when we have a coherent system, if you want uh, as a cooling uh, uh, liquid or, or, or as a cooling system, uh, we have to take care with the, the, the adjustment of these parameters. So finally, this is again our group. I hope to to, to, to have give you some taste about all these areas, uh, quantum information, quantum computation, quantum metrology, and also quantum thermodynamics. I hope that it, it was not too, too much information at the same time. 
Uh, if you want to visit us, we will be more than happy to receive you in Santo André. And uh, this is our website. This is a picture of the university. Uh, in the website, you will find uh, the way to contact us. And thank you very much for your attention. We have a lot of questions during the... <laughs> yeah, everyone is tired. <laughs> okay, so thank you again. Yes. Where you talk about, uh, because you say that the demon in your system is the hydrogen, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And then you say, check it out. <laughs>